Hey, yeah, first off, I just want to say thanks for coming out on a Sunday. Um, when we wanted to schedule this before spring one, we had to make the decision to take a little bit of weekend time, and I wasn't sure, and this, this is amazing. Um, so great to have you here. Can you guys roll my slides? So I, I just wanted to do a quick welcome for everybody um, and answer a quick question. Why Cloud Foundry? Why right now? There's all this buzz happening, and it's, it's interesting. People come up to me like, why is there all this buzz? What, what changed? I thought, I thought we had cloud already. Why is this platform thing happening? And why suddenly is it happening so fast? So this is a familiar theme, but it's becoming more and more real every day, is that there's a lot of very wealthy enterprises that have controlled the economic system in the world for a long time. And that economic system is being challenged and changed by software at a faster and faster pace every day. But a lot of those organizations built software development processes that look like this. And they built these back when I used to work at Sun Microsystems in 2000 for very large 24-month software deployments. And they developed a whole bureaucracy around how you go about managing systems and software and delivering value that is now incredibly out of date. And so when a developer wants to go create a new application or apply business logic to an application that already exists, they have to you know, get through this maze. And there's a whole economy happening right now of startups and incubators and small companies that are taking agile teams of very highly proficient developers and challenging existing economic systems with them. Paul Graham is most famous for this. He measures software delivery and user acquisition every week. And he has, his, he has a startup cycle and measure every single week. And everyone in this room that works at a large enterprise, he's out to get you. And they're coming for you. And so you either find a platform to deliver value faster, or you buy one of his companies. That's the decision. So was this built for an Agile team? The answer is no. Was a virtual machine built for an Agile team? Now this is really where this conversation gets very interesting. This Is a VM on demand the way to empower your Agile teams? The thesis of platform as a service is absolutely not. It's not the right way of empowering an Agile team because you have to have someone on that small team that understands operating systems and operating system security and patch levels and wiring load balancers and all these other things that have nothing to do with writing code. The special thing about PaaS is it's the application-centric layer in cloud. It's all about providing an optimal developer interface for an Agile team to move quickly and create value. Cloud Foundry was built soup to nuts to address that problem to allow an enterprise to have an agile team to quickly iterate with software with semantics and language um, that is very specific to what a developer would already understand. Take my application file, run it for me in production. Take my application file, scale it out to a thousand instances in a minute. Take my application file and auto-wire a new service into it. These are things a developer already needs, and so when you build a small team, you don't have to have a specialist in any one given area. They're all able to use the platform very naturally. But a lot of platform as service plays out there. There's people that are trying to make developers' lives easier. Why is Cloud Foundry suddenly fill a room on a Sunday? Like, that's an interesting question I was thinking about all weekend. Why is that happening? What's special about this? The other angle here is that scalable software is eating the world. So there's something unique happening where before you thought of a system on one server, and now you're thinking it on thousands of servers. And suddenly, there's one person from Baidu here. I just met him. Um, here he is. Raise your hand. <laughs> so we're not making this up. Um, <laughs> some of our competitors get grumpy about this because it's an amazing use case. Um, they're able to do a billion page views a day right now with Cloud Foundry at high scale. There's no other open source platform or service or any platform or service that's able to do that. There's a whole trend happening where there's a new open source interface to thousands of servers. That's the new emerging architecture that's got everyone very excited. Hadoop's another great example of this. How do you run a MapReduce job across a thousand servers at once with no blocking? How do you deploy a thousand apps at once with, across different environments with no blocking? That's what Cloud Foundry does. So a couple of quick show-off stats that help drive this home that really get people excited about our platform. In a virtual machine world in Amazon, it might take five or six minutes to create a VM and know that you have it. In Cloud Foundry, you can create a new application container in under half a second. That's how fast this whole system app operates and, and responds to what your needs are. Here's the really cool thing. How quickly can you then register that application on the dynamic router and have it a live URL ready to go? Same amount of time. There's no other system in the world that's built to scale and respond that fast. 
Now, if you want to do an update to your system or add capacity, how much of a downtime penalty do you have to pay? Zero. This is what me operating at internet scale for continuous delivery is based around. And Cloud Foundry is built to do it, and that's why we're winning today as a community. So the whole purpose of having this conference and starting to do it every six months is, is really simple. It's about scaling a community. And it's not about me or any individual here. It's about all of us getting together every six months to talk about how this platform is changing, what we need to, need to do to push it forward, and how we can all move forward together as a community. It was really as simple as getting a bunch of smart people working on this problem together in a room and, and seeing what happens. And I'm really excited to listen to the talks today. So I wanted to thank Christopher Ferris, who's in the audience, um, from IBM, uh, because Chris and I spent a lot of time Uh, working on this, and IBM was a huge uh, founding co-sponsor of this, uh, and part of the reason why there's so many people here today. <laughs>